from Los Angeles, California. It's the Mad Scientist Party Hour. I love when you do that with no warning. It's always coming. You stupid jerk off. Watch out now. Hello there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name is Kevin Kraft, joined once again by a man who has thrown his pants and underwear out the window and is currently tucking his boner back between his legs and titty fucking his own ass cheeks. That's Jeff Clark. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? And beaming to us from the other side of Skeletor's glory hole. The bearded, booger-eating, ball-tickler known as Shuddy Boy. Oh, I wish uh, I had worn the my initial... Hold on. I wish <laughs> I would on, have, have gone with my initial t-shirt choice for today, uh, which would have been a new Skeletor t-shirt that I bought over the weekend. But Do we have to reboot our Shuddy Boy? Since it's cold, I'm in a flannel and didn't wear one that is going to be exposed to the world. Yeah, what what is the weather like right now? Because I'm going to be in the east coast on the east coast in like three days. Well, you're you not going to gonna like a it. Jacket. You're not going to like it. Uh, currently, right now, it is 44 degrees. Yikes. I fucking the hate low that. today was 31 degrees. <laughs> The low tomorrow is 28 degrees, and the high tomorrow is 48 degrees. You know what? Thursday. I'm gonna, Thursday, it's supposed to be 65. Trending well, that's up. not bad. But then Friday and Saturday, 45, with a low of 26. You know what? I'm going to have I, I have to have some strong words with my cousin about uh, planning his wedding in the cold months. Uh, you know what? I'll just I'll just put it in the card. <laughs> During football season, no less. I feel like November weddings are very uncommon. Unless you're Axl Rose. Nice. Didn't it wasn't that song about her dying? Yeah, didn't she get struck by lightning or some shit? <laughs> I thought maybe hit by know. a car. Iconic music video. I thought. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. It's been got, so long I, since I've seen that video that I couldn't fucking tell you. I got the vibe from watching the music video that maybe the he drove her off a cliff and hopped out the car as it was going down, almost like a reverse, like a reverse thumb on the weeds. I, it, 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 of going off. Now that you say that, car. putting it all together, I think she dies in a car accident in the rain. And the um, car gets struck by lightning. Yeah. Well, no, there's lightning in the video because there's thunder in the song. Okay, here's how I remember it. And maybe this Axel is something hops out of the car before all this happens. Maybe this is due to the Mandela effect. But I thought in the middle of the wedding, lightning flies through a window, hits her, and blows her out a different window. And the that is, I don't rain. remember that at all. <laughs> I do believe the church windows do break, uh, but I don't. I don't believe that his bride is shot out of them. Like, like fucking Guillermo del Toro direct that music video. <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> I mean, I remember watching that video as a kid and thinking it was true. I was I was there just like curled up on the couch, like oh, that poor man. You went through everything with Axl Rose. Yeah. That song. What was that, like a seven minute track? I was looking yeah, for all the feels. It is very long. Yes. Remember they used to do like best music video ever countdowns like once every couple of years. And that was always like top five. It was always that sabotage, nine inch nails closer. Oh, good video. What's the other? There's like two more usual suspects that happen. Well, oh, waterfalls was always making it. Oh God, yeah, Jesus Christ, that wore out its welcome fast. Man, How that dare you? That, Water, waterfalls kicks ass. That closer video, 
like I haven't thought about that in so long, and it just seems like one of those things where once you're done watching it, your phone rings and a voice just goes seven days. <laughs> it is so fucking creepy. I got to yeah. rewatch that. Good music video. So Axel in that video is marrying like a supermodel, right? Of course, yeah, like a Tony Katane type. Why would like every other hair metal band in the the late eighties? But to be fair, Axl Rose probably got bitches back then, right? Yeah. I mean, they all probably got bitches back then. Well, it's he's just... he's single now, I think. I think back he got married once. He got married during his peak. Because I think I looked this up recently after seeing Guns and Guns N' Roses live. And he's just been a bachelor since 91 or some shit. He doesn't have any little roses? Just There's porking no kids. tons of... That doesn't movies. mean that he's not still a bachelor. He doesn't have to be married. You don't have to be married to have children, Jeff. I don't Fair think enough. he does. I'm just saying. You does just have Axel to have sex. Rose have kids. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know what that's like. William Bruce Rose Jr. Oh, that's fucking Axel. What the hell? Stupid Google. So, he just cloned himself? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Imagine. <laughs> he just got that a is a eight. very Axl Rose thing to do. <laughs> he got a one eighth version of Axl Rose that just walks around him. That would be an awesome mini me. Uh, in 1990, he married Erin Everly, who later claimed that Rose had shown up at her house threatening to kill himself with a gun in his car if she wouldn't marry him. Damn, what a pickup line. I've never used that one. The marriage was somewhere. annulled in early 1991. I don't I think it's like crooned. Like he sang outside of her doorstep or anything like that, or out on her porch. Yeah, he he know. serenaded her with that song where he says the N word. <laughs> <laughs> what song? I don't remember that Guns N' Roses track. I think there's, I'm pretty sure there's a, a GNR song with the N word. Wow. I don't think there's a GNR song with the N word. Neither does Lila. She's very angry. You would say such a terrible thing. Okay. Do you and Lila want to make a bet? It involves a bong. It involves... I don't want to make a bet because I'm, but I, I can't imagine the why Le- there Layla would be... does. You hear it, right? I don't know why there would be a Guns N' Roses song with the N word in it. We're trying a little, uh, uh, hip hop metal. I think he may have been using it tongue in cheek. All right, you're gonna, you're really gonna make me Google this shit. Tarantino wrote the lyrics. <laughs> no one's making you Google this. What song do you think it is? Uh, one in a million. Police and n bombs. That's right. Get out of my way. Don't need to buy one of your gold chains today. So he's not using it tongue in cheek there. If that's, uh, he drops an f bomb too. Immigrants and f bombs—they make no sense to me. Oh, wait a second! Wait, here was this track. How come? <laughs> did you just open the door for Axel Rose being canceled? I'm gonna no. feel bad if we did that. No the snitches. I honestly listen. You have to that one that you just started. You have to hear the whole verse. Yeah, you're taking it out of context, Kevin. You piece oh, of no, shit. it's oh. immigrants okay. and f words. They make no sense to me. They come to our country and they'll and think they'll do as they please, like start some mini Iran or spread some fucking disease. And they talk so many goddamn ways. It's all Greek to me. What year was this? <laughs> uh, Eighty-eight. Good old days. Like when you can play grab ass with secretaries, smoke cigarettes on planes. Well, there's a YouTube video giving the story of the song. Uh, it, was, it was in character. It was like a Kendrick Lamar song. Did he change his vocal inflection at all? I I don't even know if I've ever heard that song. No, no, beats me. He was just doing oh, a no. bit. He was doing yeah, a bit. I really wanted was, to talk. To it was not a bit. It was not a bit. He's a three percenter. Uh, it. Let's. I'm. I'm just looking at this. 
uh, I used words like police and the N word because you're not allowed to use the word. Why can black people go up to each other and say it? But when a white guy does it, all of a sudden it's big put down. I don't like boundaries of any kind. I don't like being what I told what I can and what I can't say. I use the word because it's a word to describe somebody that's basically a pain in your life. But then in 1992, he says, I was pissed off at some black people that were trying to rob me. I wanted to insult those particular black people. And it was a way for me to express my anger at how vulnerable I felt. I I felt in certain situations. That's what happened with Anthony Cumia, right? That was a that was a fun conversation that turned sour quick, and it's all my fault. I did that. <laughs> that I'm was, sorry. Yeah. In the cold November rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, the big takeaway from this conversation is that Great Axel Rose's video. wife got struck by lightning. It blew her out a window, and that was all real. That really happened. Yeah. So and- was that? I do you think they had gone on any double dates? Uh oh. Here we go. Turn the spotlight on to Kevin. Kevin, you your scumbags. retardation needs to be put uh, on full blast here. You scumbags. So we talked, me and Shuddy talked about this, and to bring the listeners up to speed. Oh, Actually, no way. You, you guys conspired against me? Weird. <laughs> we didn't conspire. Never we would have conspire. thought that would happen. No, actually... This is actually a spoiler for the Easter egg. Kevin typically shows up to our little hangouts or digital hangouts late. And one of the recent instances where he was late, me and Shuddy had a few minutes to talk. And, Ke- just- and Jeff explained to me what had happened on Fortnite. That was not conspiring. No. It was just Maybe if you would have been on time, I wouldn't have gotten a hold of that little juicy nugget of information. Of course. And I've actually thought All about right, well, this several first times. First off, I, I was on night. time, you fucking urinal sniffer. Today you were. Right. We're talking should, about. Should I go back through were... the MSPH text chain and, and see how many times Shuddy Boy has said, uh, "Sorry guys, I uh, need an extra fifteen minutes." Wait a second. That's not the point of the topic right now. The point of the <laughs> it topic should be. is it should be. You, you don't. <laughs> you don't know what a double date is, and I find that fascinating and um, concerning because you have. I a, think a, a what's girlfriend. even. I, I think what the root of the problem is that he doesn't know what a date is to classify something then as a double date. Okay, well, we should catch the listeners up to speed with what's going on here. Yeah, Jeff was telling the story before you tried to turn it around on me. Kevin's a much better storyteller. You go, Kevin. So we're we're, we're playing Fortnite. Pooh Team 6 is geared up and ready to go. And Jeff goes, Oh, so uh, what's everybody up to this weekend? And I said... I'm not really doing much, except Rant Rant has a friend in town visiting, so we're going to go get brunch Sunday morning with her and her boyfriend. And Jeff was like, oh, a double date? And I was like, no, not a double date. We're just going to get food. He's like, no, no, that's a double date. So Kangaroo Court kicks off. It's going back and forth. The only other Pooh Team 6 member in the party was Ginger and Juice, who went Switzerland and remained neutral. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, which is funny because anytime I'm on the right or I know my argument is correct, he somehow goes Switzerland. Anyways. So Jeff and I were bickering back and forth. And I'm like, how is this? This isn't a date. Her friend's just in town. She's just going to see her friend. And Rhett Rhett and I spent our weekends together. So if she has to go see her friend she hasn't seen in like five years and have brunch, I go, and she just this this woman just happened to be in town with her boyfriend. He came. I was like, I just don't see how this is a double date. It's not romantic. It's not like I don't feel like in the morning when Rent Rent and I go get breakfast. It's like, come on, let's go on a date. It's like, no, we're just going to get breakfast. Just gonna go eat an omelet. I don't have a much of a problem with how you put the the discussion initially. The one issue that I do have though is that you made it sound like I started the bickering when the bickering was like 90% you. Like I said, oh, wow, cool, double date, like in passing, moving on to the next topic. And then you circled back. because like, well, wait a second, that's not a double date. And then we got into a back and forth argument about what a double date is and really what a date is. Yeah, and I think that's like the really, crux of it. that's where I think, I think you're, 
definition of date is too rigid and too it has to be a romantic kind of event right like i i think there needs to be in your head there needs to be some sort of like i don't know uh predetermined um situation or like predetermined like event that you guys are doing that if you're either reserving uh tickets for or or a spot for or you bought tickets for when as you could just be something simple like i don't know going to a coffee shop together or a double or a brunch going uh, to the movies yeah going to the movies could be a date i'll, when I'll admit when i'll admit that when rent rack going to the movies was a date but now that you guys are exclusive and do it regularly you probably don't see that as a date anymore well yeah correct? that's what i was gonna say i've never really given the term too much thought but i guess Subconsciously, I always assumed that a date was when you're in the the courting period, and you go out, uh, and then once you're in a long term relationship, dates are just special nights, special getaways. It's not like I feel like by that definition, if if Rant Rant and I just were like, oh, let's you know what I, I real I'm really craving In and Out. Let's just go get a double double. That's that's now a date. Technically, if, yes. If we walk across the street and go to Starbucks, that's a date. I mean, a date is a social or romantic appointment or engagement. Romantic so, or social or social. Well, and okay. In honest. that case, when when Jeff and I go visit the goat, Jeff and I are on a date. Would it's you social. call it that, Kevin? Kevin, it's would social. you call it that? Kevin, you know would you call it that? I would. I mean, In this new light, oh, wow. yes, yep. I would. You're dating me. You're I mean, fucking... technically, I'm not gonna get canceled. I've been school. I'm not gonna do an Axel Rose. Technically, you are correct. This is is this is this, is this what how Axel Rose was talking about in that one song? Though I'm hearing it now. This is what you wanted, Jeff. Right? This is the outcome you were looking for with all I'm your bickering. Sorry, Jeff. I didn't mean to fucking have that spin around on us. Uh, but no, yeah, no. I mean, you want to you want to be wise. You want to play games, Jeff. Here's your prize. Wait, what did I do? What's up? I hope it was uh, yours. So I technically. When you, <laughs> Jeff, and Rent Rat went to the 626 night market together, you were on a date with both of them. Well, Cheech was there, That's... so it was a double date. Oh, it was a double date. You're right. <laughs> no, 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 no. That doesn't count. Because this I'm is with fun recategor- However... recategorizing things, Jeff. <laughs> no, no, no. However, it counts as a date for Kevin and Rent Ran because they drove there yes. together. Yes. Me, and, me and Cheech. We weren't like up his ass the whole time. We hung out most of it, but like they, you know, it, it, it was a date for them and they were still in the courting period. And if there's any like question about whether or not I was on the right side of this, ask Kevin how his conversation went with Rent Rant about this topic. So, yeah, after enough bickering, it got it got to the point where we had to call in the big guns. And I was like, you know what? I'm texting her. And Jeff was like, oh, you better not fucking use any clever wording to twist this around on me. So, okay, where... I'm, I'm scrolling back through. Uh, okay, okay, I found it, I found it, I found it. So this is what I wrote. And before I sent it, I got clearance from Jeff. And I said, I'll give you the context of this question after you answer. But would you consider brunch with your friend and her boyfriend on Sunday a double date or not? And she oh, wrote you back. You type that out and even hit send. Like right when you finish typing, you're like, okay, well, wait a second. Wait, what? As you're typing it, would you consider brunch with your girlfriend who's from out of town and her boyfriend a double date? Like as you're typing it, doesn't that da- it should have dawned on you at that time? Like, yeah, that's a, okay, no, because I I felt like date. the primary focus of it was you know her friends from from NorCal, so it was just like I haven't seen her in like five or six years. We were just accessories. Me and that that chick's boyfriend just happened to be there for it. The primary function of that whole thing was for the two of them to catch up. Every time you I was go just on a double candy. date, you I was were, the, I, actually I, every time which, you go on a date, uh, you're an accessory. Just, yep, That's just it. really, just really, even confirms that it was a date. So what counts as not a date? I would say. You almost had it with In and Out, but the drive-through situation is so long in In and Out that you could actually break up with your girlfriend by the time you order your double double and then drive out of there. 
You know what I mean? Like enough things could happen, but like your average drive through, that's not, that's not a double date or that's not a date. Excuse me. I mean, like going to the grocery store, running errands that you, I guess both kind of need to do. You could write off as not a date as like you just living life together, but like meeting up with our girlfriend who's from out of town and her boyfriend, that girlfriend's boyfriend is 100% a double date. And it is, and all like in perpetuity, I don't want to get how this is over your head. And it's just, I've been thinking about it a while. And the funniest thing is, is you circling back and being like, no, it's not a date. And like your tone, your tone was like, if we were kids in the playground and I was like, Ooh, Kevin's got a date. Ooh, Kevin's got a date this weekend. But like, it wasn't an emotional reaction. You logically thought that it wasn't a date. And that's what you were arguing was like logic. And it yeah. was. Cause like I was telling Shuddy before, I feel like I never really sat down and tried to com- compartmentalize it, but I always assumed dating is at the early stage of a relationship before things become official before you know it's it's considered long term and then it starts becoming dates again when you have kids and you get somebody to watch the kids and just the two of you go out then it's dates again okay so you- so there's a lull between the initial courtship process and having a babysitter yes. when it's not dates anymore <laughs> yeah everything between there does not count as a date wow unless it's someone's birthday or valentine's day okay i think i cut you off or maybe not, but what did she say again? What was Rent Rant's response? She wrote, yes, it's a double date. <laughs> <laughs> Just initially, ini- so like right off the start bat. With, yes, 100% it's a double date, and then I'll explain it. Uh, she a- Then she wrote, she actually didn't know I have a boyfriend, so since she told me she was bringing hers, might as well ask for you to come too. <laughs> When I told her I invited you, she specifically said, yay, our first double date. <laughs> and then she wrote back, why? <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. And then when I tried to make my case, she just texts back, brunch is the perfect double date scenario. And I was like, all right. I'm fucking, oh no! Oh! Give well, me one you second. Just threw your, you just threw your phone for a show to the Fucked Our everything up. Fucked up. Now Fuck me. Unplug and plug in the auxiliary. Oh, now this, we've got this, no. I, who knows what they can even hear? Just your standard Kevin Craft calamity right here. <laughs> All right, keep babbling. I got. It, I think so I got it. Careless. Fix. All right, it's fixed. Careless Kevin Craft. <laughs> Just <laughs> triple K's all over the place here. God damn it, Kevin. Well, so, I guess that makes sense because I. I struck out three times, right? Huh? Huh? Did I do it? Sure, that works. No, that works. That's a good job. Yeah. 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 Well, uh-huh. how was the brunch date? <laughs> that was fine. Did you have your game face on? Because that's what I ended up... I was just making conversation, but then when we found out that it was a date and you were meeting her friend for the first time, then I was like, oh, Kevin, you got to put your game face on. You are... <laughs> You were on, you're in a test. You're going into a test. So the the realization that it was a double date, did that add pressure to the situation for you? No. Okay. I feel like I do relatively well in social settings. Yeah. I've got I've got some interesting yeah. stories. I'm very quick with poop jokes. Your it's, stories do not do well with women. Oh, that is bullshit. Uh, you know what? You have a lot of stories. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got good ones. Yeah, I think uh, I think I would I would be graded a B. Do you think I'm just generic white guy? Were you cooler than her boyfriend? Be honest. Be honest with everyone here in the on the Zoom. I mean, I would say I have a cooler yourself. job. Well, that's fair. You podcast all the time, so sure. I guess that makes me cooler. What's he do for a living? What kind of car was he driving? I didn't see. <laughs> It's probably in a rental anyways, huh? Visiting from out of town, NorCal. Could be Silicon uh, Valley money. That would really put you behind the eight ball, buddy. That's true. That would bump me down to a C. (laughs) In the 75th percentile. 
Did uh did Rat Rat give you uh, a report of what her friend had to say about you? No. I didn't so even need to ask. I didn't even need to ask. All right, because well, you guys good. are still together? I feel like you know when you go to a social setting and you're like, hmm, that wasn't the best me. I didn't put my best foot forward there. I think I do really well with people's families and friends. I'm with you the same way. I feel, I, I feel very confident usually in my double dates or meeting the, the family um, situations. So I'm with you. Hey, I got a joke for you guys. And then he looks around real quick. Uh, is it safe? Is it safe? Okay, yeah, I can tell this one. I can tell this one. <laughs> What's the difference between Michael Jackson and Buzz Lightyear? No, so is that a real joke? I think we had another. Mm, not one I'm going to finish. It's shutty. <laughs> do we have any other topics to bring up with Kevin? Yes, we do. Kevin, I have just emailed you uh, a sound clip to play as a topic of discussion. Oh, goody. Uh, well, hold on. Kevin, you should have brought your legal team here. I always represent myself in all legal scenarios. Why is this not working? Oh, like Ted Bundy. You saw that work for him. He's a free man. Uh, no, no, I think he. I, I think mean, he he's dead. The chair. So. Yeah. A free spirit. If that's if you're into that sort of thing, I guess I don't know. Wait, how long ago did you email this to me, Shuddy? I just did. So I would, if I were you, I would hit refresh, Kevin. I wanted to make sure that there was no, uh, no shenanigans, and it was something that you and Jeff were both hearing for the first time. All right, here we yeah, go. Yeah, we didn't conspire on this one. I, um, kind of want to, if I have a boy, make his middle name Danger. Yeah, sure. Is that really bad? No. Oh, you ripped that from the Ellis show? So Kevin is talking about naming children, Jeff. Oh. Oh, wow. I want to abort this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice uh, of words, too, because yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, you like that, right? <laughs> Why? You some abortions with me real quick, Kevin? <laughs> the way you say that makes it seem like there's been some conversation. No. Nothing serious. You joke about having children? <laughs> yeah. I joke about lots of stuff. Yikes. No, I mean, it's... We we have been dating long enough where the at least the question, do you want to have kids someday, has, has come up. Fair enough. That is fair. And you said, if you do, you want to name him Danger? Middle name. Middle name. <laughs> Oh, we don't need danger. So, okay. but this is only because I, I would should be in LA. LA babies. You can name <laughs> danger because the way you say "if I have a boy," it makes it seem like having a kid is a foregone conclusion. It's just if it's a boy, it would be danger. Well, no, I mean, look at this point in time, she's pregnant. I'm, I'm pushing forty. I have. Zero kids. There's a good chance I, I don't really have any swimmers left. That ship may have sailed regardless, whether I want it or not. Jesus, that this has gone to a somber place. Not necessarily, because I don't... It's one of those things where I, it's take it or leave it. Like, if, if I had a kid, I wouldn't be like, oh, God, it's over. I have to fucking... I have to jump off a roof. I need to find a way out of this. The important thing is, do you think you had more swimmers than your girlfriend's friend's boyfriend? That's the important thing. That's all you're competing with. Here. How do, wait, how do I, oh. oh, he's younger than me, so he, he probably has me beat. Ah, man. But he's less fertile. Let's be honest. Come on. Put yourself in front of him. To be fair, I did. I, I, don't, I don't remember in what context, but that did come up this weekend. And Danger, as a middle name, got shot down faster than the uh, brunch double date question. <laughs> His middle name's in me, Rant. <laughs> it was immediately oh. no fucking way. 
I was like, really? I think it would be funny. She's like, no. Not not funny in the slightest. Like a, did you get down to like a top three? Well, baby names. My case is. You guys are talking about. That does anybody now. Does anybody know Jeff's middle name? Mine. Yeah. Do you know Do you know Jeff's middle name, Shuddy? I do not. I don't think I do either. Oh is man, it f- I can't tell you guys. Like Florpton? No, it's Michael. Oh, maybe I did know that. Jeffrey Michael. Yeah. Pretty. Do basic. you know? Do you remember mine, Kevin? Sucker. <laughs> Dick Sucker Miller. <laughs> Man, I didn't really get it until he said it all out, but then he nailed it. He's like, wait, Richard Sucker. I don't know, whatever. Glenn. Okay, oh. I think I did know that because of our friend Glenny Hanna in New Jersey. Yes. Okay, so yeah, middle names aren't anything that really stick with anybody. And nobody even asks. We've been doing this podcast for how long? Never been like, hey, what's your middle name? Kyle. So if Yeah, but no one has a Kurt. cool story. If your middle name is Danger, you probably tell people that, right? Unless, unless you're embarrassed by it, and then you don't. I don't have a middle name. I feel like your kid would or, have a good enough sense of humor where he wouldn't be embarrassed by the middle name Danger once he gets to like at least 15. That's what I'm saying. Could you imagine if you went if you were like in kindergarten and you're meeting all your classmates for the first time and you're just like, yeah. My name is uh Joe Danger Craft. All those kids would be like, fucking whoa. You're immediately the coolest kid in kindergarten. And does that change in middle school? Does that change in high school? Does that change in college? Fuck no. Might change in the workforce. Leave your middle name off your application. For sure. Don't, Don't include it on your resume. Name. But yeah, once you don't get hired, to be a forklift driver with a middle name of danger. Yeah. I mean, just you keep that to yourself. Then once you're in, once you actually have the job, by the way, call me by my middle name. Danger. You're the coolest guy in the fucking warehouse. You kick ass. I think it's awesome. I think it's fucking awesome. Do it for real. Middle yeah. names are throwaways. You can put whatever you want in there. I wanted to be Ultimate Warrior. Jeff, Jeff Ultimate Warrior Clark. That you wanted that to be your middle <laughs> name. <laughs> uh, or at least my confirmation name. That's weird because I wanted my middle name to be Andre the Giant. <laughs> Kevin Andre the Giant Craft. That would be a sweet <laughs> middle name, huh? It's hyphened. <laughs> so it's kind of one word. Well, I've thought some of some baby names for you in Rent Rat. Oh don't, God. Did don't, you listen to this podcast? Don't be racist. Kaden, Kaylin, Kraft. Look, we've already discussed. If we get married, I'm taking her last name. Kevin, Kelvin, Kraft. Calvin, Kelvin? Kevin, Kelvin. Wait, Kevin? K-A-V-A-N. That's How about not a we name. Go with, we'll go with uh, Kathy, Chris, Kraft. Chris, like Chris Jenner. Wait. No, oh, I hate that. Okay? Cages, Camille, Kraft. What about Caden Kavanaugh Craft? <laughs> Krispy Kreme Craft. We can definitely That's a good make one. Kids middle name. That's a Kavanaugh. fun first and fun middle name. Yeah. Who doesn't love Krispy Kreme? I have a feeling this conversation is going to get me a pink slip, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's a bort. Let's abort these baby name conversations. This baby name <laughs> conversations. I actually but have I thought that was interesting what Ke- which study stumbled upon. He's, uh, his ears are always open. So, And you know what? For for a, a, a couple of guys who overanalyze every syllable I throw out and try to turn it against me, I'm surprised this conversation didn't happen on The Yellow Show. <laughs> it was the other two guys that fucking criticize and flip around every syllable I say. Yeah, well, I don't know. I guess they couldn't use that one against you effectively enough. I have I. It's funny you bring all these things up, Shuddy Boy, because I actually have a bone to pick with you. With me? Yeah. What did I do? Are you well, Glenn? Yeah. Are you? Are you currently being haunted? I mean, not haunted. I may have seen the ghost. Yes, I have mentioned at least to you two. 
that there was a house that I had heard tell of a house ghost. I uh, distinctly remember putting Battle Cat facing east. I woke up this morning facing north. That's, that's some spooky shit. Get, the, get Zach Baggins. Well, I, I'm, I don't know what we're talking about. I gotta be honest. Why would, why would Shuddy be haunted? Why no, there's a ghost haunted? in the house. I, I remember you telling me this when you first moved in there, that and the, the, the random drawers that you found. But why did this, why is Kevin bringing it up right now again? Because I have a mole. No, uh, probably because Tim mentioned it to him. Because I saw the ghost two or three weeks ago. Was it jacking off? I was, so Sharon was upstairs doing something. (laughs) It wasn't (laughs) masturbating in the corner. And I was. It shot ectoplasm all over my face. (laughs) No, I was sitting in (laughs) one of the recliners watching TV and out of the corner of my eye, I can see the living room from where I was sitting. I saw someone come down the stairs and walk across the living room. And I thought it was Sharon. And then nobody came out of the living room. And then Sharon came down the stairs a couple minutes later. But I absolutely, somebody walked through the living room. Sounds like a ghost to me. Yeah. Yeah. You sure it wasn't Miles? I mean, or MJ, an average height human, the dogs would not look like an average height human walking across the room. Have you ever well, I mean, tr- tried to establish communication with the ghost? I do not want to because what if it's chill at, as of this, as of this moment? Yes. The ghost is chill. What if trying to communicate with him causes him to not be chill? Apparently, Sharon has seen him frequently. He's he's been around. He's he's normally. It, it's not an uncommon thing for her to see him in the middle of the night downstairs. Look, we has haven't she ever seen his penis. Is I he hope a perverted not. ghost. Yeah, that's... he's not a flasher. Not that I'm aware of. Well, that's already a good sign that he's pretty chill. Um, I didn't like seeing him. That's for damn sure. It. When I realized what had happened, I was quite perturbed. But it was a it was a dude. Why did you think it was Sharon? Because I just saw. I didn't see. Like I didn't see him. I uh, this sounds sexist. Here we no. go. Could be a chick. Okay. Ghost. No, because as I said, Sharon has said that she's seen him a few times. She's the one who's referred to it as a guy. Fair so enough. I'm just assuming. I saw like if you see somebody walk past you. 20 feet away out of the corner of your eye. You, you're not really seeing that, you know, you're seeing just a figure move. You're not catching all the detail. That's all I saw was a, an adult size thing go across the room. He's just using guy as a reference, not as a okay. gender, Kevin. And what God about, what about um, like other instances of seeing this ghost? The dogs will stand in the dining room looking into the living room with their hair up barking. Sharon woke up in the middle of the night last week or the week before and couldn't fall back to sleep. So went outside with for a cigarette. And as she came downstairs, she saw him standing in the living room. And then she couldn't get the dogs to come back inside. Uh, and that really spooked her. Hold on, sorry. Yes. Oh, wow. So they'd rather deal with the cold than that fucking ghost. Yes. Well, it sucks some real estate. <clears throat> Can you flip your house for a profit and keep the cold ghost stuff just out of the description? I mean, yeah, I don't. Fucking, fucking flip a house. Come on, baby. The problem isn't selling this hat. Wouldn't be selling this house. It would be finding another one. That isn't haunted. I hear you. I mean, no, no. Just like- one that's able to be bought. The housing market here is so fucking insane. Not, I mean, not LA, Southern California insane. Yeah. 
but it's that didn't houses, need to be said. houses come up for sale and then they immediately sell within a couple of days for significantly higher than asking price. That's how man. It seems to be well, how stuck with this goddamn ghost, huh? So you have to yes. make it work. Maybe you should try to speak to him or her. Yeah, should we? Can we hold like a, a live seance on MSPH? We light some candles, get a Ouija board, or no? Because Ouija boards do have a seem to have a tendency to pull evil things through. We, no Ouija boards. I'd rather they're made by I Parker could, Brothers. I could be convinced that maybe to try some sort of one of those uh magic box things or whatever they call it, ghost boxes i don't even know what they're called I'm, a baba duke box know. a ghost bo- sure yeah we got to find a ghost box and we got to we got to uh, turn it on in your house we'll see what it reads you should bust out the ouija board and be like um ghost in this house do you like he man <laughs> Are you working for the Ghostbusters movie studio? And this is just some long, drawn out trailer. And if so, can you get us Ecto Cooler? Spirit Box. That's what they're called. How much do those cost? I'm not, we're not taking it out of my Patreon cut. But nobody has been shoved, right? And no one went down the stairs, right? Because Corey Taylor, one time on the, sh- on the Ella show, said he got pushed down the stairs by a ghost. 90 bucks on Amazon. I, I, you know what? I will chip in for that. You know what you should Kevin, do, Shuddy? You? For maybe for like a Patreon video, just keep filling up your volcano and walk around the house, just blowing vapors out, and see if just a face forms somewhere. That would essentially turn into a Patreon snuff film because I would literally have a heart attack and die if that had, if that happened. But what if, what if the ghost numbers, what if the ghost starts going and you get the first ever ghost shotgun captured on video and people have to pay 10 bucks to see it. I feel like like it's more likely that I would have a heart attack and die. Oh, they're not that scary. Obviously, he just pretty... walks down the stairs and goes in the living room to go get like a ghost beer or some shit. He he's not trying to fuck with you or anything. He's not he's not knocking your he mans off the shelves. He's not unplugging your mic. He seems chill. Seems That's because you know uh, this part of the house. Yeah, make him goulash. Probably didn't exist when he lived. Oh, so he's not allowed in there because this part of the house was an addition that was put on in 1990 when they redid the kitchen and the upstairs. Which era ghost do you think this is? Yeah, what if he's like I mean, Beetlejuice? So, Does he look Amish? He's yeah. only in the front part of the house, which is the older part of the house. So whatever happened to him was pre nineteen between 1929 and 1990. That's a big gap. He could be one of those mashy ghosts. Or he could be a Nirvana enthusiast, clad Buster fully Keaton in goes. flannel. I mean, so Sharon seems to have more experiences with this ghost than you. Could she give his description to, like, a sketch artist? Does she know his features? I don't know. I've never... I have never really wanted to know the, the few times that it's come up. I've shut the conversation down pretty quickly. You got in the cliff notes and that's all I, I've not wanted to. Wow. Oh, too scary. Stop it. Because that's I was not, outside. Not what men last, do. They don't bury their head in the sand. On I was outside issues. last night smoking a cigarette and thought I might've seen him in the kitchen, but then I was like, I was just talking about this the other day. So maybe I'm just freaking myself out and imagining it. Should be like, look, since yeah. you're here and you're not paying rent or anything, could you maybe just do a couple of dishes? It sounds like a pretty good roommate. I mean, he's not making much of ruckus. You just see him every now and then when he's refilling his water cup. What about the I mean, kids? It could be worse. The kids ever seen it? No. So what do they? Oh, well, have you talked about this with them? What do they say? They seem indifferent. I haven't told my Isn't boys. They're not paying attention. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> that it, they're like, okay, whatever. I'm the only <laughs> one in the house that is concerned by it. Oh, Sharon. Well, 
she said you said that she was concerned when she couldn't bring the dogs back yeah in. only that one that was the one and only time that she's seen him right. that she's been uncomfortable so if anything sharon's worried about the ghost and his interactions with the dogs maybe he's not a maybe he's not good with dogs or maybe it, there was something else you know yeah. i don't know sure. i Again, I don't want to leave this topic because this is interesting. I just want everyone who's listening, all the Puminati, to just remember this the first half of this episode because I get a lot of shit, rightfully so, for a lot of things about me. But Kevin Kraft doesn't know what a D is, and Kevin think or uh, excuse me, and Shuddy <laughs> believes that he has ghosts in his house. I just want everyone to remember that, but bookmark those things because I'm sure the guns will be turned on me probably in the next. I don't know, five minutes. But this is this is a better episode for me than it is you guys. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So I mean what's what's like how long have you been in that house, Shuddy? It'll be two years in February, so a little over a year and a half. And how long after you moved in did you have your first experience? Three weeks ago. Oh, that like the ghost has hasn't shown itself until three weeks ago. I've heard, like I said, I've heard of him prior to that. Well, no, but I mean, but, when did like okay? So but your first I never, but- I never. Sharon's been seeing him sporadically since we moved in. Very early on, after moving in, she yes. saw the ghost. And you never Correct. were concerned. You just like blocked it out of your. It opinion. was. I don't want to. Let's not. I don't even want to think about it. It's like we if, have if, to move. if there was a Scudigera in the house, I was like, I don't want to know about it. Just somebody please kill it. I don't want to yeah, see the like Scudigera. It, I'll worry about him when I, ha- when, I, danger. when I come face to face with him. <laughs> danger, live up to your middle name. Go kill that Scudigera. <laughs> danger, go take on that Scudigera for me and Rent Rent. <laughs> <laughs> so I, at, at what point, what would have to happen for you to call to like go on online Rudd. and try to find an exerciser or a ghost expert to come and check out your house. Have you ever thought about hiring that guy with the soul patch and bring it, him, him bringing a camera crew over to see what's up? I, I wait, I just got an idea. I don't think we should call him an exerciser. I think we should call him an exorcismist. Sure. Okay. That sounds when better. You're going to call an exorcismist. To handle this ghost situation. I mean, things would have to be like poltergeist, Amityville horror type. Oh my God. He moving the He-Man toys. He took my old school Skeletor out of the original packaging. Oh, this means war ghost. I mean, like if it was a situation where we felt unsafe because of it, then that would be, I would be looking for. I mean, think about, think about the plugs you could get. If you got that ghost hunter show to come to your house, when you give the initial tour, you'd be like, yo, this over here, this is my He-Man museum where I record Mad Scientist Party Hour once a week. You can get that on iTunes and Google Play. Yeah. And I hope Bradley and Draven are listening because, like, what if, like, money were to go missing from your wallet? Would you just chalk that up to the ghost or what do you think? I like you're missing booze. Oh, okay. All right. I just want to. I just want to figure out what's a ghost. And they're old, old enough complaint. now that uh, they probably drink more than I do. So yeah, oh, that's cool. I mean, you Party could be missing a, ghost. a big opportunity here. This could be a cool ghost. You could have somebody to like smoke weed with and play FIFA with when Sharon's at work. Because Sharon smokes weed and plays FIFA with me when she's not at work. Wait, do you play FIFA? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> that is what not do you a cool think, fucking what do you, ghost. What do you so. think our relationship <laughs> is? <laughs> this is awesome. So Kevin also, A, he doesn't, would you consider smoking weed and playing FIFA a date, Kevin? Is that a date? Well, it does give me a boner. <laughs> oh, wow. You're a really EPL fan. I never knew that. You're a <laughs> soccer guy. No, I'm just saying, like, this is this is you're in a great situation. This this ghost has been showing up for about two years. There's never been anything hostile. Nothing's gotten broken. No one's gotten shoved down a flight of stairs. He obviously is Good cool news. cohabitating with you guys. Take the next step. You know? Go in for a smooch. Be like, uh, ghost, 
do you smoke pot? And then watch the little paddle on the Ouija board move. And if it goes to yes, oh, I bet you like vaporizers. And then you have a ghost friend. We can have him on the podcast. I'll pay for another webcam to ship out to you so we can get a, anyway, get him a feed. Okay. Hold on. We're not going to do fucking Lars and the Real Girl here. The Real Girl on MSPH, all right? I'm not entertaining Shuddy's ghost. Ghost. What do you mean, man? That'll be our... We'll finally get more than five views on a YouTube post from us. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't we just put there's a ghost in all of our podcasts on the YouTube title? And if they can't see it, we'll put it on that. We'll just wait, wait. We didn't mean to see the ghost. You see that weird glare that I had and I kicked him out? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what your lens flare was during the Easter egg, Shuddy. Yeah, it was a ghost. Ghost Saying, is like... Fuck this podcast. Or let oh. me be on. One of the two. What are you guys... What are you guys doing over there? You doing you, you taping a podcast? <laughs> how many how many mics? How many mics you got? Cool. You got, you got What's one? the theme? Because most podcasters like they're they're investigating a case or talking about a famous event. What do you guys what yeah. do you guys talk about? You guys um you guys you guys do true crime? <laughs> you got murders? <laughs> I got murdered. Want me to tell you about it? Yeah, it's really interesting. They still haven't solved it actually, but Dude. I know who did it. That would send us into the fucking stratosphere. People have giant boners for true crime and ghosts. We combine both. Then we throw in fart jokes. All of a sudden, $100 million deal deal from Spotify for Mad Scientist Party Hour. Shuddy Boy doesn't even have to do the bong thing that he hates. If you... I will... You'll you'll beer bong piss and shit... (laughs) If we if we drop the whole ghost thing, no, no. What I was gonna say, I love oh, that. Why with you did it turn into a beer bomb? Oh no! Hold on, hold on. I misspoke. Sorry. <laughs> That's way worse than what Kevin was trying to get. Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> way worse. Wait a second! My I'm bad. consuming it now. <laughs> it went too far. My bad. Too far. Um. I could feasibly start to research, figure out a way where to research and see if anyone has died in the house and go from there. For sure. And then we can ask any of anybody in the Puminati who's had real life ghost experiences, see if we can get their advice on how to make contact. And maybe you could leave out like little treats for it. Like if like like you said, if if you had a Ouija board and you asked the ghost if it smoked weed, you could like break off little pieces of nuggets and leave a a breadcrumb trail right to a microphone and webcam, and then we catch it, we catch it on camera, boom, instant millionaires, MSPH, biggest podcast in the world. Yep, featuring a ghost. We will definitely be at Skankfest next year. Think <laughs> totally. Think you about think it. Maybe Shady. we can get a, a thousand viewers per episode on YouTube. We might even be able to launch Poop Fest. Hmm. Ah. Shady, that's been the dream the whole time. Yeah. It has All been. you have to do is is get this ghost that Sharon has seen multiple times. You'd be on cribs. Oh, if you look over here, you'll see my three PS five. Have you toured this concern? Or like, have you just brought brought it up to us, your 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 homies, and now the Puminati? Like, have you told your parents or Sh- Sharon's family or anything like that? I mean, I mean, n- no, it hasn't. It, like I said, it's not been anything terrible. Oh, so, oh, fair enough. So it's not been like, oh my god, we have a ghost, we need help. It's like I think I saw a ghost. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. So gotcha. you and Sharon were the only people home at that time, right? And the dogs. You didn't hear them, Kevin? Just clarifying? Yes, there was nobody else home. And you- There was nobody in the living room when Sharon came downstairs, and nobody had come from the living room to me or gone back upstairs. And just to be 100% clear, you, you, didn't, you did ask her, be like, wait a second, didn't you just walk down the stairs five minutes ago? And she was like, no. You're like, fuck, that's a ghost. No, because I saw it and I was sitting in the recliner watching TV. And I turned around when I saw it, waiting for her to, because I, 
it was in the corner. It walked over towards the corner where she like has her plants and stuff. So I figured she was just walking over there to check them out and then was coming into the living room to watch TV. So I was, I waited for her. I turned around and waited for her to come in the room and then she never did. And then she came down the stairs like two minutes later. Okay. But Terrifying. what, what were you playing? I wasn't playing anything. What were I you watching? T- I had the TV on waiting for her to come downstairs. What was on TV? Nothing. It was on the Netflix Armageddon. menu. We hadn't picked anything yet. We were sitting down to watch TV for the night. Like she had gone upstairs to change. So then what were of- you staring at that you caught her in the, or the, or the ghost in your peripherals? I was reading is- cracked.com on my phone. Isn't that like the offshoot from Mad Magazine? Is it? I don't know. Okay, either yeah, way. I believe it's you. a comedy website that I read funny picto facts on usually, especially when I'm pooping. Well, that's a, that's a good use of time. But she, you, she's aware of this encounter, right? Yes, she is. Because when she came downstairs, I was panic-stricken. Wait, I was how visibly, did you do that? I was visibly shaken. When the ghost walked down the stairs, did you hear footprints or footsteps? No. no. Oh, but Sharon, silent ghost. Uh, the only creatures I hear coming down the stairs are the dogs because they always come down like a herd of elephants. So when she walks down the stairs, you don't hear her footsteps either? Correct. She's like a ninja. Yes. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm eagerly waiting for more, for more updates. I really hope you befriend this guy. Could be a girl. I know people tend to skip the episodes when we have guests, but if we got if we got Casper, I'm sure people would tune in. Yeah, I'll stumble upon his hidden filmography, just like I did with Booger. Well, that is that is truly soul chilling, Shuddy Boy. Oh. I wish Thanks. you the best of luck. Thanks. I say you flip that fucking house. Come out here to California. Let's do it big. I mean, you need a proton even pack. If I sold this house for twice what it's worth, I'd still be about a mil shy of being able to afford a comparable house in Southern California. Sell yourself short. You get that ghost on this goddamn podcast. We'll be all we'll all be buying houses in yeah. California. I'll tell you that. Yep, the ball is in your court, Shuddy. Your move, man. You got some real dipshits. Let's let's attack me somehow. What, what do you what do you got? Mm, I'll get I'm you just later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys watch anything this past week? Uh, yes. Two things. Oh. Uh, Friday night I watched. We watched the harder they fall. The Netflix film. Oh, is it the cowboy movie? Yes. Black Cowboys. Correct. How was that? It was very good. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Idris Elba? Idris Elba. Um, Delroy Lindo. Love Regina Delroy King, Lindo. Uh, Zazie Beats. Well, Domino from Deadpool 2. Uh, it was very good. It was It was a lot of fun to watch. It's long though, right? Two hours and fifteen minutes. Man, I feel like movies are just getting longer and longer. I like I like a toit ninety minutes. Toit. I feel like if you're at three hours or you can get a three hour runtime, you should just break it up into three episodes and put it out on Netflix. Yeah. What do you think? I don't hate that. All right. So what's what's I don't I don't I haven't looked too far into that. What's the plot of it shuddy plot of it is um it's like blazing saddles but with more action uh main character's father was killed in front of him by idris elba when he was a child and it's a he goes on a revenge spree when he's an adult oh so he's the idris is the bad guy correct it's black on black crime in westerns yes scary 
And there's one part uh, where they go into a white town. And it is literally everything is white. The people, I mean, and the buildings are all white. The the like dirt is white. Like, it's just straight up literally a white town. Uh, so there is some some heavy-handed comedy in it a little bit. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to watch. Very violent. Um, was the white town not very woke or PC or like, were they obviously the bad, like there's bad stuff happening in that town. It was. Um, so it was uh, like they walked into the bank and asked to make a withdrawal and the bank teller laughed in their face and said, you don't have an account here. Basically like oof yeah. profiling. Yes. Was they no, I'm not gonna ask that question. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> so uh, how many how many Idris dicks are you gonna suck? Because that this might be this might be a plane movie for me. I might download this on the old iPad. I think it is I would say Three seven five. It was a lot of fun. I was wavering between three seven five and four. Even that makes... though we're not supposed to do points two five numbers anymore, according to the internet. Yeah, well, we record, we we review movies how we like. Internet. That's three point seven five. That makes the cut for a plain movie. I'll check. Yeah, that out. it was good. It was it was really good. Um, it didn't really drag. It was pretty much nonstop action. I mean. The opening scene where the the kid's parents get killed, Idris carves a fucking cross in his forehead with a straight razor. Cool. Like it's yeah, it's <laughs> from the jump there there's shit going on. All right. I'm into that. And it's like the way they did it was they used the names of real people for the characters. So he he plays a character named Idris Elba? No, uh, his was Rufus. Nope, not Rufuck. How the fuck do you, Rufus Buck. Who was the leader of an outlaw gang. Oh, so they based it on like real cowboys and shit? Yes. It, the, 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 after the title card, it said, or before the movie starts, it says, the events are fictional. The people are real. Okay. See, I don't cowboy movies. I'm not usually a huge fan of like westerns. They they fucking make me super thirsty. But yeah, this there's real no real. I, not that I noticed, unless these were real places, um, of where it was. I I would say it was in the upper part of. Oh, you know what? Maybe it, they did say Oklahoma, but it was not like desert. It was like plains and snow and stuff like that. All right, I there can fuck grass. with that. Yeah, there was grass. Okay. And I like grass was, in my westerns. It was a western movie, but it was the minefield. I'm trying to. It was like almost like a gang movie, but. Western themed instead of set in a city, if that makes sense. All right. Does uh, yeah. Men's society meets plays and saddles. I gotcha. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So there's a lot of. Nice. Is that the only Western you can pull? Are you talking to me? Yeah, Blazing Saddles. Yeah, Blazing Saddles is the only Western I've ever watched <laughs> from front to back. Can you name a Western? Right? Can you name a second Western? I can actually. I saw this one in theaters. Three Ten to Yuma. Hmm. Yes. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, it's Christian Bale and Ben Foster. I think was in that movie. I think that's what it's called. Three Ten to Yuma. Yeah, I saw that one too. It's pretty good. Uh, I watched something on Netflix as well. Oh, what did you watch? I watched the newly released The Rock. Gal Gadot and Ryan Reynolds movie Red Notice. Oh wow, she was looking good. 
Yeah. And how was that? Real quick, hold on. Before oh. you talk about that, going back to the James Bond movie, and I never made a point of that. The girl that was in that, what was her name again? Which one? The um the assassin who he met up with and oh, they were supposed to be Anna de Armas. Oh my she was distractingly hot. Like yeah. by far the best part of James Bond, that movie. I, I don't know why I didn't bring that up during the review. And right after we stopped recording, I thought like, oh, my God, how did I not bring up that smoke show? Because holy shit. Holy She's shit. She's the one from out. Knives Out. Yes. You know what I'm talking Blade about. Blade Runner right? 2049. Just, just distractingly beautiful. It's like, oh, holy shit. Ben Affleck's girl. X traded her in for J-Lo. Round two. Oh, that's right. They're back together. I forgot. I just can't even imagine what that guy's life is like. Like what world he's in and like the... Th- options that he has like it's absurd how you could dump that girl have a falling out with her is just i don't get it I, he didn't want to put a baby in her hmm what does she think about the middle name danger ben affleck reportedly didn't want kids with anna de armas and the pandemic romance he only wanted the three kids he had with jennifer garner Jeff, you know, have you ever seen the Keanu Reeves movie Knock Knock? No. Not the greatest movie in the world, but if you're an Ana de Armas fan, watch it. Okay. God damn it. You talked about this, right? They try to have a threesome with him and, and then, well, oh, have a threesome with him they and then succeed. Try to murder him? Yeah. Yeah, I do got to watch that. Like, I got to see Ana de Armas, well, however you say her name. I got to watch her do everything. Her and her friend are so hot that even seeing how the movie plays out, and the torture and hell that Keanu Reeves goes through, when the credits rolled, in my mind, I was like, worth it. Keanu got the good end of that deal. <laughs> yeah. So you come out of that alive. You... <laughs> Fuck, man. Yeah. All right. Anyways, I'm sorry. What were you reviewing? Red Notice. I watched Red Notice. And I... Gal Gadot, not as hot as Anna Diarmas. No, but... S- laying down on that one. Still gorgeous. Still very enjoyable. It's, mm. you know, it's a, it's an art heist movie. So The Rock is the law. And Gal Gadot and Ryan Reynolds are rival art thieves. And it's, it's a lot of crisscrossing and beautiful backstabbing and Ryan Reynolds doing his thing and The Rock doing his thing. And, you know, Gal Gadot, it was... It was kind of exactly what I expected. It's if you're if you're like Shuddy Boy and you're just Believe waiting for your lady, your significant other, and your ghost to come sit on the couch while you're scrolling through Netflix. If you don't have any plans on a Friday or Saturday night, you're not going to be bummed out after watching it. It's really because I've been wanting I've wanted to watch that this weekend, but we didn't. It's a and solid. I never have plans on a Friday or Saturday night. It's a solid couch movie. It's it's not going to win any awards. In 20 years, you're not going to be talking about it like how Jeff talks about Armageddon or like how I talk about Die Hard. Jeff also talks about that other dumb movie. Um, Judgment Night? Effect. Classic. You got to go check out. Judgment guys. Night. Judgment oh, Night. Yeah. Yeah. Not as, I guess Trigger Effect's not as good as that. But I mean, it Anyways. was. It's, it's. I was not surprised at all. It is exactly what I was expecting. It was time well spent. It had some some decent action that was over the top. It had some funny lines in it. And it's three very talented, enjoyable people doing their fucking thing. It's there's no surprises there except it does have a lot of twists and turns. It's it's one of those art thief heist spy movies with constant twists happening. They go from New York, next scene in Geneva. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're like in Chile. Now they're in fucking uh, Russia. Now they're at the North Pole. It's 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 like a Bond movie. I uh, gotta hurry up and get to Johannesburg. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta yeah, lead yeah. on something. But it was cool. I didn't I didn't mind it. It's now. Go ahead. I was gonna say going back to the whole Friday, not much planned movie um, idea. Would you consider? Grubhub, maybe some Thai, some Japanese, Netflix and chill on the couch Friday night. Is that a date? 
or is that not a date? You know what? At this point, I'm just going to say yes. Everything's a date. I would have to disagree with you, though, Kevin. I will say it is a date once you get into an argument about the things that you have or have not done recently. As someone who's been there before, I'm just let me just throw that in your. I'll say this even in your ear hole. When I got up and went into the bathroom during the movie and fake coughed really loud to cover up the sound of a fart, that was a date too. <laughs> okay, I, I uh! like it. <laughs> it was like that. Feels like you're starting to get it, Kevin. That's good. So, how many red notice sticks are you gonna suck? I'll suck three. I don't think I'll ever watch it again, but it was it was time well spent. It was it 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 killed two hours sufficiently. I think I feel like if I came in here and rated a movie a three, I'd be very unhappy. It's definitely not a Friday well spent. I feel like we have to do this every time. A three's not bad. If you rate if th- this 60% is sixty percent is bad. This is a perfect analogy for you, Jeff, because this is your barometer. But if I if 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 I was included in the aggregation of Rotten Tomatoes that would be a fresh review. A three out of five is a fresh review. I hate Rotten Tomatoes. I hate it at its core. And you're actually proving my point here. <laughs> I don't think... And if if we do the, the thing I say every time, double it. A six out of ten isn't all that bad. Yeah, it, I would get ground. I got grounded for six out of tens in fucking elementary school and middle school. If I this met the difference between you and I. If I met Ana de Armas and she shot me down and said, Look, I appreciate I appreciate it, but you're a six and I only date nines, I would be like, Ana de Armas just gave me a six. Fuck yeah. I, I, when we go into your stupid little world that you created, <laughs> what you think makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but in actuality, I do not agree with what you're saying. So if Ana de Armas told you you were a six, you would be bummed out? It would probably make my day. No, that's fair. I agree with what you're saying. But when it comes to grading movies or grading execution of things, I wouldn't be like stoked at a six. And you're also like, what, 30 percentage points away from being in her league. Like, who knows if you have a good enough job? Like, she won't even talk to you. Unless you're a nine. Like if you so, showed, if you put a picture of me about it. next to a picture of Ana de Armas and showed them to aliens, they would be like, oh, two different species. <laughs> right. Like this is like so a beautiful woman says, and this is like a disgusting sewer frog. So it sounds like if you were to be like, oh, wow, Anna, you consider me a six? She'd be like, well, no, I'm just being nice. Oh, yeah, that would suck. <laughs> right and that's kind of what you're doing here with red notice like wow you think i'm pretty good well no no not really i mean no but i do I think i do think do friday night i perhaps you're not terrible i do think red notice is a six that, I'm, I'm not i'm not secretly being like eh, it's actually more like a 5.2 but you know <laughs> just trying to be nice yeah, i mean gotcha you did couch it with if you have anything else better to do maybe don't watch this movie I'm saying these days, lots of people, your husband, your wife, you're about to sit down, the kids are asleep, and you're just endlessly scrolling through Netflix. If you put on Red Notice, you will be like, all right, cool. And I think that's a three. I love when you try to simulate what adults with kids do. I know. It's so foreign to me. I know. Well, maybe, maybe not the way danger. if you keep talking about naming children. You know, yeah, when your kid falls danger, asleep like, and then you zip it up in, in a sleeping bag and throw it in the attic, that's when you put movies on. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Turn them up really loud so you don't hear that kid fucking cry. Exactly. Yeah. I saw another thing. So did I. Oh, you go, Shuddy. You go. Uh, newly available on Disney+. Plus. Oh, oh. I finally saw Shang Chi. Oh, ooh! I think I might still have Disney Plus. Yeah, you were texting me about it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Shang Chi kicks ass. I will admit, after the first two minutes, I was so stoned that I was thought somehow I managed to put on a Chinese version of the movie because the first 
few minutes are all in subtitles to the point where I did, in fact, text Kevin and ask him if that was the way it was supposed to be. Because you're going to be speaking this Chinese shit the whole time, Kevin. <laughs> No, um, but it was it was very very good. It was really a solid movie. I really enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. It felt a little long, but the action scenes were good. The fight choreography was amazing. Uh, I really liked it, and I don't want to spoil anything, but I think it helped set up Galactus. You think Shang-Chi did? Yes. Because I think Eternals did. I think they both do. Hmm. You know what? It's It already ran its theatrical run. It's been on Disney Plus for a couple of days. I don't think it's too much of a spoiler if you say why. Because when they are in the mid credit scene and they're trying to figure out what the rings are, yeah, and nobody can identify it, but it's sending a signal. I think the rings are calling Galactus. Hmm. That it's celestial technology. Did that you makes see? The rings. Have you seen Eternals yet? Have not. Hmm. Does There's, that go against what happens in Eternals? It doesn't. Does it... But I think when you when you see Eternals, you're gonna be like, "Oh, I smell Galactus." Right, but what if this Shang-Chi, since it came out first, was just a small hint at it, and then what happens in Eternals is a bigger hint to the puzzle? Like, what did you take from the closing, that mid credit scene? Uh, I just I just took it as very vague, and, like, we're, we're still trying to figure out what these, where these rings originated. I didn't I didn't dig any deeper into it than that. Okay. <gasps> Whoa. But so how many Shang-Chi dicks are you gonna suck? Four. That's fair. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna get that on four K when it comes out, because I like I like discs more than streaming. Um I huge, thought you were... huge movie news, guys. Oh yeah. Uh Mel Gibson will direct the fifth and likely final installment of Lethal Weapon. How many lethal weapon dicks did you suck, Kevin? I mean, why are you even thinking? <laughs> as a franchise, what the fuck is happening as a franchise, the first one. Let's go with the first one. Mm. Please tell me what I want to hear. I mean, I would have to give it a rewatch, but it's a potential five dicker. All right, fair enough. Get out. Shutting, this, when's the last time you've seen it? I've seen it relatively recently. It's a great fucking movie. I watched I it. I watched it around the time that the Lethal Weapon TV show. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that. I forgot that that existed. Holy shit. Because I watched the movie and then watched the the first episode of the TV show. And it was pretty much parts of the first movie just put into a TV show, like the, the jumper. Right. Like, it followed a lot of the beats of the movie in the first episode. Wait, do they have the actual jumper thing in the first yeah. episode? Yeah, That's yeah, just terrible. Oh, thank, thank God they canceled that fucking show. You guys can't even think of another... Well, they didn't cancel it. Rigged? They canceled it relatively recently. Oh, all right. My bad. When the oh, actor who was playing Riggs got canceled, they put Sean William Scott in it. Stiff Meister, nice. Right? Fucking love Stiff Meister. What did the other guy do? He got canceled. You drop an end bomb? Lethal weapon. What he did he do? Right? So I just like Danny Glover is 75. Mel Gibson is 65. Are they just gonna be giving people parking tickets? Do you think I would say Lieutenant Murtaugh is probably too old for this shit? You yeah. was fired for misbehaving on set repeatedly being a problem to work with might not be canceled maybe he's just really into method acting you just couldn't deal with it anymore i just i feel like it's you missed the boat you can't do a lethal weapon five 
Why? I mean, they were even pushing their luck with Lethal Weapon 4. Oh, no. Stop it. Lethal Weapon 4 kicked ass with Chris Rock. You know what? I agree with you. You're, you're... I do think Lethal Weapon 4 kicked ass. That might be the Lethal Weapon I've seen the most. Because I liked all the Kung Fu shit with Jet Li. Mm-hmm. And when you they know... gassed Uncle Benny in the dentist office, that was funny as shit. You're right. I'm withdrawing my excitement about Lethal Weapon 5 because this could be an Irishman situation where they have Mel Gibson and or oh, Mel Gibson. I feel like could still do action, but they could have Mel Gibson and Danny Glover doing action and it'd be very, very off putting. So I'll leave the door open for that. And that not sucking. But if they're like, just like good with guns, no, they're they can investigate. Like if they turn it more into like almost like a murder mystery or like a, uh, like a, um, which I'm gonna call it like an um, Agatha Christie novel, like a, a a corrupt cop thing where they gotta they have to like solve a crime from the inside. So it's like a just and, a procedural drama and not an action movie anymore. Not so much. You have a little bit of action. You know, they have like cool car chase scene. You have a cool, um, you have you know a couple cool shootouts. But maybe there's like a they have a younger kid in the uh, that's working with them on their investigative team that does the bulk of the action. Chris you guys Rock? made a cringe voice. Did my did my audios pop or something? No. Oh, okay, cool. Did I just say something stupid? No. Yeah, like a Chris Rock like character. Because he but, was in know, Lethal Weapon Four. Sure. I don't know if he can be if he can be in Lethal Weapon Five. That's cool. Maybe then do another guy who's because at this point doesn't it feel like Chris Rock's character could be also getting too old for this shit? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when did Lethal Weapon Five come out? Like twenty years. Lethal ago? Lethal Weapon Four or Four? Excuse me. Yeah. I had to be like 20 years ago at this point. I think I'm going to guess and say 98. We've been on the, well, yeah, 19, yeah, we've been on the 98 was correct. Damn, dude. So it came out before Armageddon. It came out when I was in high school. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. That's all right. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. So Chris Rock is getting too old for the shit. I'm saying a more of a mystery, less hand to hand combat, some more all cool sh- uh uh, shootout scenes, cool car chase scene, bang, bang, boom, 95 minutes, spit it out. Let's go. Can we put them in like Iron Man suits? I, I'm telling you, if if Danny Glover, superhero if Danny Glover has to run at 75, he's going to do that thing where he like kicks his legs when he runs and like hops his shoulders up. Like, yeah, that's how I get up and down the basketball like, court. Just a rickety old man running. Come on, 75, you can't. That's what I'm saying. You can't have him doing action stuff. You can't be running. You can't be getting into fist fights. That can't happen. That's what I'm saying. So you got to build up the drama. So then why make a Lethal way. Weapon movie? You, like if, if, if you didn't know about this news and we're like, hey, Jeff, we want to pitch you on an idea for a movie. Let, let us know what you think. It's Lethal Weapon, but there's no fighting and running and jumping. We're going Are a more murder she wrote route with this one. I mean, you can make up for a lack of hand fighting and 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 like physical action scenes with gun violence, right? That's yeah, but I mean, you can't do a ninety minute movie of just old men hiding behind you know a downed tree and popping out and shooting and then going back under. I mean, that's why you introduce the younger detective who's got squabbles and who can fight. So maybe if they get into an issue, kind of like with Jet Li, I guess, you know, Mel Gibson stepped up and duked it out with Jet Li in that situation, but he still had squabbles. This time, they hand over the hand-to-hand combat to a younger cop who they introduced in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, this can be done. It can be done, but will it be good? fucking hope so kevin or else what do we have to look forward to in this world i don't as, even have a rant rant i mean as long as he says you go don't have sp- a danger yet if he says go spit i'll be happy yeah well, yeah is gary no i guess gary Busey died huh no gary Busey's alive oh his character you mean <laughs> yeah well, yeah no gary Busey will never die <laughs> i just Speaking like of- he just goes go spit rigs and his false teeth fly out of his mouth this is just getting sad yeah, you you made it sad. I got really excited about this about this news update. That- I was just trying it to was, manage your expectations. Yeah, it's might it's probably not going to be good. 
Yeah, I'm going to go even like further. It's probably not going to happen. Right you, you think Mel Gibson's not going to honor his word? Or you think it's the studios that are going to pull out? Every now and then, let me tell you, every now and then. My, so my brothers listen to the Patrice O'Neill, Obi and Anthony, like, conversation and bit uh, where they go through and he, and Patrice O'Neill narrates the Mel Gibson voicemails. So every now and then I'll just be like working on my computer and Cheech, you'll randomly hear Cheech bust out a Mel Gibson voicemail <laughs> reference and it's fucking hilarious every time. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I love the Mel Gibson voicemails. He's brought me so much entertainment over the years. I just hope he really sticks the landing with this Lethal Weapon 5 thing. No, nope, we'll You see. make me smoke, you bitch. <laughs> you ruined my day. Did I just hear somebody chime in in the yeah. background with a Mel yeah, Gibson? You, heard you fucked my day up. <laughs> you, you, you can keep your pussy ass son. I better have my daughter. <laughs> I fucking love Mel. Well, uh, I, that movie Fat Man, the last Mel Gibson movie that I saw was pretty good. I watched that. It was decent. Not bad. Walter Goggins. I mean, that's who, that's who they need. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Walt. I saw I, I I watched a a new movie on Apple Plus because oh. still using Rent Rant's free trial on that. What Apple did Plus you watch? I watched Finch, which surprisingly enough was not a solo movie about that guy from American Pie who runs home from school to take shits. <laughs> it's Stifler's mom. It's a Tom Hanks movie. In the apocalypse, where he is by himself with a dog and a robot he built. So it's a little bit like uh, Wally meets I Am Legend minus monsters. Help! So. And they don't even fully explain why the Earth is in tatters, but it has something to do with a solar flare and the atmosphere getting destroyed and humans did something. Doesn't talk about, like, Republican lobbyists, nothing like that. No. Doesn't get too political. God, it's, I'm not trying to hear that shit anymore. It's mostly... It's okay. It's basically Tom Hanks is he knows he's dying of like radiation exposure, so he builds a robot that will take care of his dog when he dies. So it's so you almost have to cry at the end, huh? Pretty much. It's and he he plays a very Tom Hanksy character. He's very kind, and he's some sort of engineer for nasa or something because he's 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 incredibly smart like to you just see all the troubles he has to go through just to exist every day and it's you know there's there's fucking tornadoes happening all the time and there's there's a a crazy 40-day storm heading to where he's hunkered down so he knows he has to get on the road and move and just the the elements that he has to endure in this post-apocalyptic desert earth involves you know tying his RV down with cables and nailing down posts to keep it in place. And it's, it's pretty fucking crazy. And he goes through a lot of harrowing shit, but you know, it's, it's pretty sad. It's, it's the, the robot that he builds, man, I really wish there was no music behind it. Cause the robot's name is Jeff. And the rope, I think at one point the robot goes, how about my name is Jeff. And says it all weird. I would have very much enjoyed having that as a button, but just background audio. Yeah, kind of ruins it. But yeah, so Tom Hanks and Jeff out on it, huh? out on the road. Yep. How do they do? What a, what a <laughs> tandem! I'd love to hang out with Tom. Go on a road trip. As far as robots go, he's no Johnny Five, but as he learns and develops, he gets a little bit more charming and endearing. Somewhere between Johnny Five and Chappie, I would say this robot falls. But okay. I don't know if a ton of people have Apple Plus these days. I do. Apple Plus kicks ass. I also do. 
But doesn't it? Oh, it doesn't. It's not like a Hulu or a Netflix where it has other streaming movies. It's only the handful of original things they've made, right? No. Yeah. Well, movie wise, maybe, but they have other stuff. Hmm. You can access other shows and things. I think. I, I thought you could access Stars or Showtime through Apple Plus. But my understanding is that most of the original, like, uh, all, all, yeah, like all, like it's mostly built on like Apple original content. Maybe I'm wrong though, but the ar- Apple original content is pretty good. It is very good. Like I liked morning show, a John Stewart show. I've only seen a couple of times a problem, but it's good. Like, you know, I feel like John Stewart, um, it's more of a deep dive and less comedy um, than the daily show, but I like it. And uh, I like, the BC Boys documentary that me and Shuddy talked about a long time ago was pretty good. Or their, was it almost? They were just like it was like their Broadway show or whatever. Um, what else did they do that I really liked? I feel like they've done a lot of Tom Hanks exclusive movies. Yeah, they did the uh, the one where he's out. He's uh, an admiral, right? For like the World War II like uh, naval battle. Yep, yeah, didn't catch that one. Nah, I didn't like it very much. I saw some of it, but they're trying. I mean, they're blowing it out, right? They're they're putting a lot of money into their their uh, their studio, their movie studio, their content studio, and like after they build up a big enough library, I'm sure Apple will start like rivaling rivaling like Amazon or Netflix in the next few years, and I'm sure like eventually they'll put something out that it's just like just gonna blow them up, like. To me, Amazon Prime isn't that good, and their original content really kind of sucks, but they have The Boys, and The Boys is epic. It's like, okay. And they also fuck, have other stuff me. that's not, you know, Prime Originals. For sure, for sure. What I'm saying, though, is the Prime Original is like, they're not really that good for the most part. There are some outliers, and then they have The Boys, which is just like, for me, it's like must-see TV. Yeah. I don't know when that comes back out, but that's all I mean. is like Apple will get there. I think Morning Show... The first season was fucking epic. I highly recommend that to everyone, but I didn't like the second season so much. But what did you, you said you and Rant Rant watch Finch? Yeah. Okay, cool. It was so, good. Uh, it was, it, it, it could have, there were certain parts where it dragged. It could have been trimmed down a little bit, but that, that aside, it was, it was an entertaining watch. I enjoyed it. I liked it more than Red Notice. I'll suck 3.5. Tom Hanks robot dicks. Not bad. What do you think? Uh, I wouldn't you say you discuss? you necessarily have to run out and subscribe to Apple to see it, but if you already have the subscription, it's worth checking out. Dude, I would recommend you guys me, watch it. They gave me a one year free trial. I'm still in the middle of my free trial. Dude, I got a one year free trial to Paramount Plus. Shout yeah, out to too. Ginger and Juice who gave the tip, but. Yeah, if you Shout have to T-Mobile. if you subscribe to T-Mobile, you can get a fucking year of Paramount Plus, and you only get the the five dollar tier. So some shit has ads in it, but I mean, I don't know. I watched a few. I was just scrolling through their their content, and they have a whole bunch of Nickelodeon stuff, including mm-hmm. really really old shit. So I watched some episodes of Salute Your Shorts, and they throw some commercials in there. The man, oh, Salute shit. Your Shorts. That shit still holds up. It really bums me out that they only have ten episodes of the the twenty six they made. Uh, I also rewatched an episode of You Can't Do That on Television just for nostalgia reasons, and whoo, that show sucks ass. That is a stupid <laughs> show. That is really I bad. <clears throat> so when I learned this from the Orange Years, that that Nickelodeon documentary, but when they launched Nickelodeon. They didn't have a ton of dough, so they just reached out to try and license cheap shit that other people were running, and they went to Canada for a lot of it, and You Can't Do That on Television was one of the first things they snagged, and it's just a Canadian kids sketch comedy show, and they're really fucking bad. I mean, I only watched one episode, but it was bad. Even for kids' content, really, really stupid. I remember that being kind of edgy, like there was... Like booger eating and barfing and yeah, it was very. I wasn't allowed to watch it when I was little. Oh damn! Damn, dude, that's a, that's such a trip to me. 
Yeah, back when life had balls. When there were Nickelodeon shows you weren't allowed to watch. Dude, I, I pretty much have never been banned from watching anything. Like, in my house growing up. Obviously, like, I couldn't, like, access or get a throw a porn on the VCR. But, like, outside <laughs> of that, like, you know, I was able to watch all rated R movies. I got to put the kibosh on WWF wrestling when I was, like, 13. That was weird. Wow. That seems a little old to be banned from watching wrestling. Yeah, I feel like he was old to be banned from wrestling. Well, what, his argument was that I was a little old to be watching wrestling. I think he <laughs> what he thought was he was helping me out. Like you're gonna you're you're gonna be a virgin up until you're 35. You keep yeah. watching wrestling. Hey, I, I first I, I'm actually hopeful that one day you'll be able to touch a boob, but just to make sure, turn that stupid shit off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which. I mean, wrestling kicks ass, or at least it did back then. And I, I, I still have some friends that are into wrestling. Dom, obviously, being yep. one of them still. So, um, and I think Dom has been laid before. He, I think, he even might have children. So, he does. Apparently, my father doesn't know everything. Go figure. I watched some Beavis and Butthead on there. It was kind of a bummer that they cut the music video parts out. I feel like that those were like the funniest parts. Like licensing and copyright stuff. Yeah, for sure. That used to be. Yeah, that was always my favorite parts. Actually. Yeah. So when you would just watch it without all that stuff, it's kind of underwhelming. Like, ah, maybe Beavis and Butthead wasn't all that great. I know it was like before the time of DVR, but for whatever reason, in my head, I like mentally skipped those parts and just watched the parts with them watching music videos, riffing on music videos. Yeah. No, that didn't actually happen, but. Those are the parts that like stood out the most to me, and that was like the most iconic Beavis and Butthead shit. Yeah, when I signed up I for Paramount Plus, I was like, "All right, well, what what originals you got on here? What's what's the shit that I've been missing?" And the big thing they're pushing is fucking Clifford. Right. I mean, the thing is, and this is what's awesome about T-Mobile and that whole deal is they they do stuff like that from time to time. Like I get the yearly MLB package; they come out with the you can get a free year of the, the whole year of uh, MLB back free, which is huge for me watching the Yankee games. So they do stuff like this. So even if you're not that stoked on Paramount plus stuff at the moment, Hey, a free year of trial, maybe something will come out in the next year. Well, yeah, they I'm just teased, sure. they teased the halo series today. Like, oh, I think that I was, that. I think that was an, it's been announced, but they actually showed a, like a teaser footage. You don't really get much at all, but, uh, I bet you seek was super pumped. I know Seek loves Halo. And they do they're doing something with South Park. Yes, there is a an upcoming episode of South Park that's going to be exclusive to Paramount Plus. Yep. So I'm South glad Park, I'll be able to check that out. COVID, the first of the 14 made for TV films is a duo call and will drop exclusively. Oh, it's a movie. On Paramount Plus November 25th, so 10 oh, days from now. Oh. It's a fucking yeah. movie? Supposedly. Oh, that kicks ass. Shuddy, do you have T Mobile? No. Eh. Uh-huh. Nope. That's okay. Yeah. I'm completely fine having all good cell phone service instead of T Mobile and Paramount Plus. You could still get Paramount Plus without T Mobile. And I push back on that because T Mobile is fucking amazing by me. Fair enough, though. We're not here to have a telecom argument. <laughs> oh. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. If you need more MSPH in your life, in about five minutes, we're going to be recording our 200th Patreon episode. 200th. So if you've never really? signed up to our Patreon before, there's a lot of content waiting for you. <clears throat> you can go through the backlogs. You can catch all the old shit we've done. I think this past week, I just posted my 100th episode of Kevin's Nerd Hole. We're doing Queef or No Queef, the Deal or No Deal watch along show. Lots of stuff happening on our Patreon. So Patreon. So, uh, I think the dog got him locked, got himself locked in one of the bedrooms, or the ghost did it. Yeah, maybe the ghost closed the door. It's possible, but he's definitely locked in a room. <laughs> we'll go save him. Yeah, you want to go free him, Shuddy? Uh, when we're done with the episode, I will. So wait, I we've been doing Patreon for like three and a half years then, right? You said 200th episode? I think, if I'm not mistaken, come January, which is two months away, 
that'll be our we'll be starting our fourth year of Patreon. Holy shit. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> well, thanks to the Puminati again for another millionth time. And yeah. For real. Enough thank you. Thank yous that could be sent your way for supporting us as long as you have. I honestly thought that thing would fizzle out in three months. And yeah. here we are, you know, inching up on our fourth year of it. And are yeah. going to do our 200th episode today. You make the same statement for MSPH itself, right? Thought it was going to fizzle out, fizzle out fast, but it's going strong. Um, speaking of which, watch along, Master Chef. Have you guys seen the next level chef though have you seen this is that the thing you texted us yes i texted you because you're much more into the whole gordon ramsay world than i feel like shuddy is i have to say i have recently zach watched hell's kitchen on hulu far superior show to master chef oh blasphemy far superior Hell's Kitchen has everything I wanted Master Chef to have: drama, excitement, screaming, yelling, them living in a house together, being sequestered together. So it comes out January second, Next Level Chef, and I'm pulling up the the information right now, and it's uh, Gordon Ramsay's back with a brand new original format in Next Level Chef coming to Fox. Next Level Chef. Is this next evolution in cooking competitions as Ramsey has designed a one of a kind culinary gauntlet set on an iconic stage like you've never seen? Over three stories high, each floor contains a stunningly different kitchen from glistening, the glistening top floor to the challenging bottom of the basement. The ingredients will match the environment because Ramsey believes, believes the true test of great chefs is not only what they can do in the best circumstances, but what they can, the, what kind of magic they can create in the worst. So this sounds so. like it's mixing master chef with the raid. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Kevin, are we down? Or are we down? Maybe not for a watch along, but maybe I'll go to your place and we can watch it. Maybe I could be into that. I don't know. I just randomly had this in my head and I wanted to bring it up to you. And the we can call this one next level queef. well now we almost have to right god damn it yeah you can't whenever you attach queef to an idea that we have we almost have to go through with it yeah please don't suggest judge queefy yeah we don't i don't want to watch that we don't throw around queef slightly around here so yeah patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour if you want to check it out and join the party uh you can also follow us on instagram i'm at kevin craft at shuddy boy at Jeffro Records. And at MSPH Podcast. Um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. And uh, Shuddy, you got any stand up dates to promote? You out on the road? You touring? Nope, I'm not at the Chuckle Hut or anything. And the dog was not locked in the bedroom, or the ghost let him out because he's, not, he's now downstairs instead of upstairs incessantly barking. This is truly some spooky shit. We're going to have to analyze this on the Patreon show. I actually have something to shout out. If you guys could please throw me some love. Uh, my, my sports betting podcast, the Bet Slipping Podcast, which I do for my the website that I write for, sportsbookwire.com. Throw me some love. That'd be great, whether it be subscribe, rate, and review. I'm coming out with a daily NBA podcast under the Bet Slipping umbrella. So that in combination with my weekly NFL uh, breakdowns and other uh, sporting event breakdowns. But again, it's called the Bed Slipping Podcast. Show me some love. That'd be great. Thank you, Pumanati. Word. Check it out. Check it out, friends. And there you have it. But until next time, ooh, uh, something. <laughs>